When I released the build video on the hay wagon, I was sure I had finished the build. Taking one more closer look at this pig revealed that I had forgotten to build four handles, one for each end of the sidewalls. I hadn't forgotten about the crooked locks. I just didn't know what the purpose could be and so I didn't build them. At least I shouldn't be able to tell you something about them and that wasn't the case. Do I know more now? Well, yes and no. There are two possible explanations and I don't know which one is true. Maybe even both are true. Or none of them. To me it looks like the sidewalls could be swung downwards a bit to make for a wider bed. If that's true, the locks would serve as supports. This would explain the round locks on the bottom of the sidewalls. They appear to be unnecessary if the theory was wrong. If it was true, I made a mistake because I just built boards instead of locks. The second theory is that they could be brakes. This might well be true because the brake on the front axle can't be used while the wagon is rolling. There is no lever to actuate it, only the crank. You wouldn't want to run next to the wagon in front of the wheel while it's rolling downhill faster and faster and try to make it stop by rotating the crank. They actually could be brakes. Usually the farmhands were taken to the fields or meadows on the wagon and so there would have been enough people aboard to handle the brakes. I'm no wagoner, no expert, so if anybody knows what these crooked locks are there for, please leave a comment. Thanks. Maybe it was wrong to talk about missing bits. The locks would take some time to build, so let's start with the handles. At least they were simple to make. I just got a four pieces of 0.5mm silver plated copper wire and bent them into shape. The ends were squeezed with a pair of flat pliers. Then they were glued into place, the upper end to the inner side and the lower end to the outer side of the side walls. Oh miracle, we have vertical handles now. And now for the crooked logs. I had made some plywood for one of the wheelbarrows I'll show you in part 3. There was enough left of it to cut out 8 logs. 8 because the plywood was thin and wouldn't have looked realistic. I glued two parts each together with PVA glue. While the glue was curing I built the logs bottom. The wood is sitting in a steel socket. I cut off four pieces of 2.3mm styrene tube and sanded them into a conical shape. Then I made four loops from 0.5mm wire and drilled the ends together. The loops ends were put into the conical tubes. Then some dry fitting of loops and hubs was necessary. The loops should be sitting on the thin end of the tubs, but since I didn't plan to build them, I didn't leave enough space. Now they had to fit around the thick part of the hubs. The PVA glue had cured and so I started sanding the logs into shape. That wasn't too difficult to do. I drilled 1mm holes into the bottom ends of the logs to accommodate the loops ends. The actual locks were secured with bolts and chains. I made 8 longer bolts with eyelets, 4 shorter versions and 4 hooks with eyelets. The short bolts are those that are fixed permanently to the side walls. Four of the longer ones are those that can be pulled out. The other four are sitting in the holes on the upper ends of the crooked locks. The hooks are attached to their eyelets. Then there would be pieces of chain between the crooked locks and the side walls. My first attempt of drilling the holes into the upper ends went wrong. They were too close to the end and I had to drill new ones below them. The wrong holes were filled with pieces of toothpicks from both sides. Then the bolts were inserted and secured with a tiny drop of CA glue. After that had cured, I cut the bolts flush with the locks. Then I drilled two holes each into the upper locks next to where the crooked locks would be. I used 0.2mm enameled copper wire to attach the chain to the hooks. According to the picture, the chain's length was adjustable, so there had to be two loose ends. To one of the ends, the short bolts were attached. I glued the crooked locks to the rear wheels because they were already glued to the axle. Then I attached the hook and chain subassemblies to locks and sidewalls. The copper wire is strongly visible on these picks, but almost invisible after the paint job. 
After that I made the second sub-assembly that consists of one long bolt and a piece of chain each. The loose ends were glued to the holes near the top of the crooked locks. The bolts were inserted into the holes in the side walls. Since that turned out nicely I completed the other sub-assemblies. I had to cut two loops open because I had only used one wheel for dry fitting. That worked for two wheels but didn't for the other two. I was really angry about that silly mistake. And here we have a couple of pigs I took while I did some dry fitting with all sub-assemblies. Front axle and front wheels would be painted separately. As with the pigsty, I used a canted and thin Tamiya primer for all metal and styrene parts. Since I used plus model styrene sheet, priming was really important. I found out that whether enamels nor acrylics stick too well to the plastic, even after cleaning it thoroughly and sending it for better adherence. Then I airbrushed all sub-assembly with Tamiya Red Brown. I didn't want the hay wagon to look exactly like the pigsty. For the same reason I used a different color as a lighter shade. Then everything was sealed with a flat clear coat. In my video on the pigsty I explained why I don't use a glass clear coat. The weathering process started with one of my self-made oil washers. In this case it was my dark oil wash. It was spread liberally over all sub-assemblies. As before with the pigsty I didn't remove any excess wash. I wanted this dark and grimy look to work on in the following steps. These were done with enamels. I like the way enamels blend much better than the way acrylics do, or don't to be more precisely. First dry brushing color was Hombre Matte Sand. It was applied with a rather stiff white brush. The first color is very important for the next steps. That's why I virtually scrub it onto the surfaces. Next dry brushing color was Revell Matte Beige. I applied it with the same stiff brush but used much less force. I let the surface take the amount of paint it needed rather than applying it willingly. Let's 
The last dry brushing color was a mixture of three different enamels. White and grey are very important because old wood has a strong light grey, almost silver hue. To achieve the right look you need a very light paint. Keep in mind that there are darker paints underneath that affect the appearance. To make it look even lighter you could use pure white for a last run. I used a soft white brush and rather caressed the surfaces. All metal parts and there were many were painted with the mere red brown. The brake lining received a base painting with Tamiya above. I used a soft pencil for the steel effects. The wheels wrappings were treated all the way around. Since the copper sheet I had used wasn't fully even, there are still some small rusty areas. I had hoped it would turn out that way, but you can never be sure before you actually finish this step. After that I used my red wash on areas where water would wash down the rust. That's the easiest way to do it. With acrylics or oils it would have been much more work to achieve a similar effect. The pin wash was done at the same time. That way I could push back the rust streaks if they were too strong or enhance them if the pin wash erased too much of them. Yeah. 
last thing to do was bringing the brake lining to life. I used burnt sienna for the shadows. The oil paint's excess was removed with a soft brush. Dry brushing with white oil paint finished the job. There won't be much visible of brake blocks and lining, so this is all that was necessary. And here's the finished product. Well, almost finished. Of course I'll use pastels to blend wagon and groundwork on the dio. In the video on the pigsty I mentioned that I had bought three packages of sealing hemp. One strand was colored green. A part of it was taken from the paint bath earlier than the rest. I needed pale green hemp to represent hay. I pulled out a thin strand, cut it into short pieces and glued it to the wagon's bed. I used flat clear acrylic varnish to do that. That worked very well and I didn't have to worry about removing or covering excess PVA glue. I hope you like how the wagon turned out. We'll see you soon in part 3. It'll be about building and painting my wheelbarrows.